Welcome to the Kalispell Warhawks Dynasty. We are under the lights here. It's a Saturday night in Kalispell, Montana, and we have Mountain West play as the Warhawks take on the UNLV Rebels. Each team enters at 3-1, Kalispell coming off their best offensive game of the season. They scored 38 points and ran for over 200 yards, but can they do it again against the Rebel defense? It's time to get going here as Lorenzo Bell will get us underway in week six. Sims able to locate the ball in time and he takes it from the goal line. Out across the 20 and taken down by Scott Green. And that brings out Armani Rogers, the senior quarterback. Dual threat ability, very productive passer this season and also a very good runner. Kalispell opens with three safeties in the ball game, and the first play is a throw complete to John Morse, a pickup of 13 yards. Spreading out this defense to open, we'll see that from the Rebel offense quite a bit as Morse completes his second pass also to John Morse. Quickly into Kalispell territory, Armani Rogers wants to scramble, but he won't escape, and he is sacked on the play by Jared Merritt. Getting pressure and containing Rodgers is the most important thing for this defense today. And here's Rodgers taking off on second down, getting about eight yards. And we'll see if Kalispell has found a way to contain the mobile quarterback this time. Blitz on third down, pass outside on target, and Sims is shy of the marker. So that'll bring on a field goal try of 57 yards on the opening drive. And this kick is offline and no good. Kalispell taking over, coming off their best offensive game of the season. They go play action and battle fires long for Ja'Cory Day and they hook up for a gain of 26 yards. This is a very inexperienced secondary and Kalispell goes after him on the first play. Battle to the air again, connecting with Donny Castillo who leads this team in receptions. Gain of seven. Ja'Cory Day slot right. Play action. Three straight throws from Battle. This one is off the mark, and Myers nearly picked it off. Battle wanted Ja'Cory Day. Third and three. Another throw in the flats is Castillo, and he is stopped shy of the marker, which will set up fourth down, and the Kalispell offense stays in the game. They'll run it. Off tackle goes Roscoe Sheridan. He is gone. Touchdown, Kalispell. How about the aggressiveness from the offense? They threw it every play until fourth and one, where they go for it. And that start gets this packed crowd on their feet. 7-0, Rodgers is sacked on first down by James Watson. Kalispell has a variety of front seven players they can use to go after Rodgers with as they send another blitz and this is a gain of three. They get another hit on Rodgers with an effective blitz. You just don't know who's going to be blitzing and Kalispell's causing some confusion. On third and 10, another blitz at Rodgers. Going long and hooking up with Brian Thomas. They'll beat the Kalispell defense deep for 55 yards. Chris Smith is watching both the outside and the slot and ends up giving up the outside. So UNLV now in range to answer. Rodgers on first down. On the move again and spying him here is Malcolm Neal. Gain of three and we'll take that. Kalispell has had a lot of trouble against running quarterbacks in the past. Rodgers again picks up the first but lost the football in the process and the Warhawks will take over. It's the middle linebacker, Malcolm Neal, who forced the fumble, and Malcolm Tyson gets the recovery. Let's watch this back. First down picked up rather easily, but Rodgers, opting not to slide, turns it over to Kalispell, where they go back to the air. Battle, pressured, but gets it away to Amante Jones, and that appeared to be a face mask, but no flag thrown. A very pass-heavy emphasis to start as they will run a draw on second down. Sheridan converts. We haven't seen this. JR Battle has them in the no huddle offense right now. Hitting day on the crossing pattern. This will go for about nine. And they continue to go without a huddle. Kalispell with a different game plan this week as Sheridan gashes the defense up the middle for 10 more. 
We're hoping that the performance last week was not a one-week wonder, and Sheridan is determined to make it continue. Gain of six. Two tight ends in the game for Kalispell. A screen now, and it's Day to the outside, getting past a couple Rebel defenders, and up to the 30-yard line. It goes in the books as a 21-yard run, as it was a backwards pass. Still no huddle. They're going to throw it. Sheridan dumps it off to Oscar Williams. They are busting out everything early, and they continue to march down the field. On second and short, there's pressure, but an open check down, and again, the first down is picked up by Roscoe Sheridan. Again with two tight ends and two receivers on first down. Battle fires and is intercepted by Mansfield. That time getting a little over aggressive, trying to fit this into Ja'Cory Day, but phenomenal coverage by the linebacker as UNLV ends the Kalispell drive. They'll run it here with Williams to the right side, and he is tracked down by Malcolm Neal, making a lot of plays early. From the split backfield, Rodgers on third and six. Pressure in his face, takes a chance, and it's intercepted off the deflection! Malcolm Neal, what a play! 30 yards downfield, it's our middle linebacker. Off the tip by Smith, he keeps his hands underneath. That is a clean catch and a phenomenal play. Kalispell takes over, and now a sweep to Lamar Williams, as not only did they tire out the defense last drive, but also their own players a bit. Screen, and now losing all the progress Williams made with a loss of four. The regular starters are now back in on third and 10. Rush picked up, and Battle completes the pass for a first down. It's Donnie Castillo up to the 30 for a gain of 19 to move the chains. I really like the way that JR Battle is passing the football today. Off the fake on first down, lays it into a Monte Jones inside the five, and the Billings Montana native is down to the two. The defender nearly got a hand on it, but Kalispell now finds themselves knocking on the door as Miller is stuffed. Loss of one on the play. Roscoe Sheridan back into the game on second and goal. It is Roscoe Sheridan taking it in off tackle for a three yard touchdown. Roscoe now with five rushing touchdowns on the season. It's been a very eventful first quarter as it will now come to an end with Rodgers finding Sims underneath. But UNLV trails 14-0, and Kalispell's playing very aggressive football. They blitz two defenders on the left side as White makes the catch and he'll get the first down. Scott Green could have made the play, but White determined to move the chains. Kalispell playing mainly zone coverage here in the first half. Rodgers running again, does get past the second level, and picks up 12 yards for a first down. 27 yards rushing so far for Rodgers as the pressure goes up the middle and Mullins hauls in this grab inside the 30 and UNLV has a drive now in field goal range. Creeping down is Kelly John Charles who backs up. Going long, Tom is open but he can't make the catch and it would have gone for six. Big break there for the Warhawks, now third and eight. Dropping seven, Rodgers underneath. Williams there breaks a tackle, but he won't convert. Stopped by Malcolm Neal. And just as we saw Kalispell do on their opening drive, the Rebels are going for it. Running with Williams. Stiff form, lost the football, and Kalispell takes over. Taking over this game is Malcolm Neal with his second forced fumble. But this is going to be reviewed. Regardless, it's going to be Kalispell football, but it does appear like the knee was down. So it's a loss of about three yards in field position, plus no fumble in the stat book for Neal. Kalispell football, breaking outside is Roscoe Sheridan, and the Kalispell running game looks to be as strong as they were last week. First and 10 play action. Battle, drifting and drops it off. There's Sheridan, and he's been able to get to his check down pretty well today I'm really happy about that play fake again battle on target it's Castillo gain of seven we're seeing Kalispell really go outside the box today with their game plan go into the air again deep shot for day is broken up two defenders in the area now third down day slot left Miller is the back 
blitz is sent. Battle to the middle, and that should have been intercepted. Intended for Sonny Archer. So Kalispell cannot get points on this drive. How about the first half, though, for Malcolm Neal? This is the best I've ever seen him play. Rodgers trips on first down, lost his balance, and two yards on the play. They'll give a sack to Nate Graham. On second and 12, Williams to the right, taken down for a loss, and it's Malcolm Neal making plays out here like Luke Keekley. Third and 14, and Kalispell will send a rush at Rodgers, who floats to the sideline, and that won't convert. Sims is three yards short. Still a 14-0 game as Kalispell is putting on a show today. It hasn't been a perfect game, but it's been exciting the entire way. Short game there for Sheridan. Now it's third and seven, Warhawks. Sheridan stays in. Battle taking a shot. Day streaking down the middle, and he's overthrown. That's a missed touchdown by JR Battle. UNLV now taking over. Still a two touchdown game. Rodgers hitting Thomas. Staying on his feet to pick up eight yards. The Rebels just trying to get points here in this first half. This is very unfamiliar territory for them as Rodgers is taken down just behind the line. So another sack for Nate Graham. Can the defense get another stop? Third and two, Rodgers will get the first down and fight his way across the 50 for a gain of 13. This is an offense that normally averages 33 points per game. Rodgers heads to the outside and Sims again heads to the sideline for yard pickup. Now the empty backfield look. Rodgers down the middle connects with Graham who makes a move and gets inside the 35. Again UNLV getting close to scoring range. They just have made mistakes here in the past. Now Rodgers coughs it up and Landry recovers. That's another sack for Kalispell. Credit this one to Quinton Dunn. So many players have gotten to Rodgers already in this first half. He wants to scramble. He won't get outside of Kelly John Charles. KJC is so versatile. He's rushing the passer on this play like, a, like an edge rusher. The Rebels have fallen outside of field goal range. Rodgers hit again, and this throw is offline. Another play impacted by pressure, and it's someone different every time. On this play, it was Andy Ridgeway. Kalispell maintains a 14-0 lead, and time is running out. Caught in the flats by Ja'Cory Day, and not much help there blocking from Jones. So they get up to the 35-yard line. On first down, battle. Pressured as he floats a pass over the head of Ja'Cory Day. That's three times he's missed him now. Down the 20 seconds, battle with the pocket collapsing. Almost stayed on his feet, but is taken down for a loss. And now the Rebels have seven seconds left. We'll see Rodgers throw it as far as he can. Going up the right sideline, broken up by Chris Smith. Two seconds left. Kalispell's defense again playing very well, just trying to hang on here before the half. Hit again is Rodgers. It's going long. Broken up and incomplete. What a half for Kalispell. The defense really impressed me. And the offense, while they made some mistakes, also looked very effective. And it's 14-0. Welcome back to Kalispell football, everybody. Six recruits are in attendance tonight as Kalispell looks to get a start on the recruiting trail. Last episode, I broke down a number of the prospects with the help of Blackjack, and we'll talk more about the recruits after today's game. Six yards here on the pickup by Sheridan as the running game has once again been effective. They'll run it here once more. Oh, you can't bring him down with a shove. Roscoe Sheridan is too tough for that gain of 10. Now Miller checks into the game, and I feel really good with our rotation with Miller and Sheridan. I don't feel like it's a significant drop-off to bring in Miller after a couple carries. On third and three, now they'll head to the air. Battle, drifting right, he's chased and not escaping. JR Battle sacked and the drive comes to an end. Kalispell so far has taken advantage of an also inexperienced defensive line. Williams trying to get outside off the toss. He hasn't been down yet and loses six yards. Kalispell's defense is rallying and they're playing fast and aggressive. This is fun to watch. Second and 16 and sacked again. This time, Eugene Howell. 
your leader in sacks with seven now on the year. Third and 20. I like the screen call by UNLV as Williams flies up the sideline, but he is not going to convert. This defense continues to improve week in and week out that they are pretty special. Here's a run by Roscoe Sheridan held to a short pickup. And again, we'll see third down for the Warhawk offense. Blitz gets the battle. Ball is out and recovered by Mansfield. They had an unblocked defender come right through the middle. JR stood no chance on that play as the Rebels will take over. Single high safety and Rodgers on the screen. It's Mullins on the catch getting inside the 20. Gain of three. UNLV trying to finally get on the scoreboard. Rodgers to the air on third down and picked off by Chris Smith. Kalispell takes it back. Smith just trailing the receiver there, watching the quarterback's eyes as Rodgers makes another costly mistake and Kalispell maintains the shutout. Running it here with Roscoe Sheridan, pinballing his way forward, picking up eight yards. Kalispell has kind of switched their approach today as they were going fast and throwing the football early and often. Now with the running game established, they're leaning on that a lot more. Off tackle goes Miller to the 30 and bumped out of bounds after a gain of nine. Three straight runs to begin this possession and now back to the air, battle. Showing off the big arm, knocked away from Donnie Castillo. Again trying to hit the big play, but UNLV's defense has done a good job keeping this close. On third down, however, a first down pickup for Roscoe Sheridan keeps the drive moving. A buck 23 now for Sheridan. And they're going to the screen. Day following blocks to the outside. Wow, what a lead block as Day was unable to turn the corner. Bunch formation here for the Warhawks. Rush picked up. Battle on first down with a touch pass to Donny Castillo. We know all about the arm strength, but how about the ability to place this in a perfect spot over the linebacker's head? Here's second down for Battle and fires this pass a bit late but Sonny Archer still makes the catch his first of the game. It's a nine yard completion. Kalispell with a first down and they sweep it now. Ja'Cory Day trying to get around the safety and he somewhat succeeded. It's a gain of five. This is going to be the 13th play of the possession. Battle on second down off the hands of Lamar Williams. He gets another chance and Williams with now I believe his fourth drop of the season. He only has three catches. Kalispell on third down, complete to Castillo, diving forward to get the first down. I like that effort from Castillo. Third quarter winding down, perhaps the last play is a Roscoe Sheridan run, and he is stuffed after a short game. Sheridan now at 125 yards as Battle will throw from second down to the end zone, broken up intended for Oscar Williams. UNLV's pass defense has tremendously improved throughout this game. Now on third down, they get the pressure on Battle, beating the right tackle, and David Tate brings him down. How about the numbers for Kalispell's defense? Seven sacks, three breakups, a couple interceptions, a forced fumble, a turnover on downs. A lot to be impressed with. A shutout here in the fourth quarter, but Armani Rogers trying to change that as he scrambles for 19. They've gotten into Kalispell territory a number of times today. Rogers scrambling and there's room to run. First down, stiff arm, ball is out and recovered by Chris Smith. Another takeaway on their half of the 50. Rogers with a stiff arm and he wanted to keep going, but Kelly John Charles. That's one of the biggest hits I've ever seen from him. 17-0, Sheridan goes down on first contact. No gain. Kalispell is trying to cruise here in the fourth quarter and the check down is now incomplete for Sheridan. UNLV's defense has allowed this game to stay this close, but it's the offense that has not been able to convert at all. Rodgers on first down is sacked again. Now it's Elgin McCormick. Like I said, someone different every play. Second and 12, time for Rodgers, and an open man downfield. It is White out of bounds. At the 49-yard line of Kalispell again, Rodgers 
Floats a pass for White, and he makes another catch for a first down. They're once again in scoring range, but what's going to happen this time around? Just three on the rush. Rodgers drifts right, throws right to Sims. They're inside the 10. UNLV getting even closer this time. You know this defense wants this shutout. Rodgers scrambling on first down. Can't escape Elgin McCormick as he records his second sack of the game. Kalispell trying to hold tough. Williams up the gut. A rare handoff. Gain of seven. Third and goal from inside the five. Rodgers steps right. Throws down the middle and it's incomplete. Fourth down. And UNLV is going to go for it. Can Kalispell maintain the shutout? Fourth and goal. Rodgers complete to James Graham. Shutout. Broken. But Kalispell still leads by two scores in the fourth quarter. JR Battle leads the offense back onto the field as Roscoe Sheridan runs left. Good run here as he picks up eight. I really hope this is something they can keep going the rest of the year. Sweep now by Amante Jones, and he'll pick up four yards to move the chains. Jones again in motion, but this time it's gonna be Miller, and a gain of four keeps the clock moving. Four of 12 on third down, not great for Kalispell, as they pitch it, and Miller gets upfield, and he'll pick up eight yards for a first. UNLV using their timeouts as we close in on two minutes. Now it's play action. Battle's going deep, and laying out is Ja'Cory Day for the touchdown. Kalispell looking to end it. They missed on this opportunity earlier, and they almost missed again. Great grab by Day, and Kalispell again leads by three scores. And a big game was played this week between Wyoming and Alabama, and the Crimson Tide emerged victorious. 17-point game, Kalispell trying to wrap up their fourth victory, but Armani Rogers still racking up the yards. And that hasn't been a problem all day. They've moved the football, picked up yards in chunks as Mullins makes another great play for the UNLV offense. And they're gonna try scoring again. Rogers down the middle, and Graham hangs on again. Another touchdown. So not only no shutout, but now UNLV actually getting into double figures. Now it's up to the onside kick, and this is scooped up by quarterback Bo Lee, who's actually listed as a tight end now. And Kalispell takes over, and that's going to do it. A 10-point victory here for our Warhawks in a very fun Week 6 contest. Kalispell began this game with an aggressive approach that built them a lead that they never looked back from. And once again, facing a tough offense, we see Kalispell's defense prove that they are the real deal. One heck of a game by Malcolm Neal, one of the best defensive performances ever by a Kalispell defender. That's the kind of performance we were getting from Marcus Calhoun when he was the captain and leader of the defense. My only concern today is how the offense really struggled in the second half. After starting 11 of 13 in the air, Battle was 6 for 17 the rest of the way. I wanted to play fast against this team, go after their corners and put up some big points and hopefully cruise to a big win. It was a lot closer than I expected and we had to adjust after UNLV's defense started defending the pass a lot better. Let's take a look now at recruiting and we do have some things to talk about today. The race for Boogie Turner is still very tight, and I don't expect a lot of movement there. Hayden John Charles continues to favor his hometown school. Marcus Payne, a four-star running back, is gaining a lot of interest in Kalispell. We are in a battle for Dustin Payment and the quarterback, Walter Garcia. We received two commits to start off a recruiting class this year. It's Leo Thorne from Tacoma, 6'4", athletic, great range. I cannot wait to see what a player like him can do in this defense. We all know about the offensive line and our need to improve depth there. Well, we have a start with Clay Hutchinson from Billings becoming another member of this year's recruiting class. Like I mentioned in the recruiting episode, he's very strong and I think after a little time, he's gonna be a very good guard. Both players visited today and it was a great game to be a part of. Max Schlitzer ended up choosing Duke this week as well. I think we're close to getting even more commits. 
We are very close for players like Shane Monson, Noah Manuai, Ryan Westergren. I think we're going to have a very good start to this class that lets us focus on perhaps some higher profile players down the line. I added a guard to the list today, Zach Brown, as we didn't have many guards on the list. And I think that he's a really good pass blocking prospect. Looking ahead now to week seven, it's our biggest test perhaps all year as we take on number six, New Mexico. They have been a team that's been tough for us to face the entire series. We have lost big to them. We've also beat them, but this year they're as strong as they've been in a while. And this is the kind of offense that we've struggled to contain. They of course run an option style offense and we've seen our defense struggle against these looks a number of times. I hope that today we learned some things while containing Armani Rogers for the most part. He did have some good runs, but couldn't take over the game. We're going to play mostly zone coverage, stack the box, probably keep some safeties down near the line so that we can spy and keep the quarterback in the pocket. Now this team has a lot of talent on offense at quarterback, running back, and receiver. They also have impact players in their front seven. I'm not sure how we're going to be able to run the football in this game, if it's going to work. And if it doesn't, JR Battle is going to need to make plays. It's our biggest test of the season, and I expect this to be a great game. Thank you all for watching the episode. Hope you enjoyed. Please let me know in the comments your favorite moments and players of today's episode. Please leave a like on the video, those are very helpful and appreciated. And also subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next Kalispell Dynasty episode. And I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.